We have had a decline in the cow herd, which has caused these record setting high prices for cow. The risk is so much more now financially than it ever has been. Welcome to Ag Smarter Sessions by EverAg. I'm Kate Galloway. I'm the Director of Brand and Marketing Communications for EverAg. Today, my guest is Dr. Dan Thompson, a third generation bovine veterinarian and the CEO of Production Animal Consultation. Dr. Dan, as we call him around here, uh, consults with global beef producers, packers, and retailers, and advises companies like McDonald's and Tyson on beef supply chain issues. You probably know him as the host of Doc Talk on RFD TV, a national cattle health program reaching over 45 million homes. Dr. Dan works a lot with Everag, so we're happy to have him here on Ag Smarter Sessions. Dan, welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Kate, for having me. It's great to be here. All right. So we just covered off some of what you're busy doing. What else are you involved with today and what's keeping you busy these days? And I get to work from the ranch all the way to the consumer. And so a lot of things that I'm working on, obviously focus around animal health, around uh, beef cattle production, supply chain issues. Uh, and another one is, you know, this One Health Initiative and, and understanding how the things that we do in animal welfare, which is something we do every day from vaccinations to feeding regimens to shelter to cattle comfort and that, so making sure that we have healthy animals that provide uh, people uh, food and keep and have human health uh, at the forefront through uh, food safety and food security. And then also, if we don't have a habitat, we don't have cattle. And if we don't have an environment, we, we don't exist. So that triad of healthy people, healthy planet, healthy animals is really uh, the core of what I see more and more of our duties uh, drawing us to as veterinarians. There's probably some things that when you first started uh, working as a vet and working on feedlots and stuff that you know you you did that were maybe you had no idea what you were going to do today in the future. Uh, what are what are sort of those like transformations that have happened over the years working as a vet on these feedlots? Our biggest challenge that that I see that has continually become more of a challenge is labor, and and people that want to be in our business. And I think that's true with a lot of businesses, but when you're starting to talk about rural America and, and cattle feeding, um, labor has been one of our number one, one issues. And so uh, attracting labor, retaining labor, and then managing our human resources uh, so that we don't duplicate effort, but, and we certainly don't want to miss opportunities to, to properly manage the the cattle properly manage the the operation and and obviously manage our risk when it comes to health and risk what are some of those challenges you're seeing today we're not only short on people but we're short on cattle we have had a decrease and a decline in the cow herd um, which has caused these uh, record setting high prices for for cattle and so the risk that, that we have to maintain, not only do we have to find the cattle, secure the cattle, uh, have great people to take care of them, uh, this, the risk is, is so much more now financially than it, than it ever has been. And so as we, as we look towards the, the things that are the biggest challenges, uh, labor, uh, finding cattle, and then when, you, when you're scrambling to find cattle, sometimes we get into some higher health risk cattle. And so we will see some things and, and trying to understand outbreaks more and more uh, within the feedlots and how the interaction between the cattle, the weather, the people, all of that uh, comes together uh, so that we can say stay sustainable, which means stay profitable. So some of these feedlots are getting uh, quite large and more complex. And um, are they able to, you know, between the weather and the health and all these risks, are they able to effectively monitor these herds? We do a tremendous job in the beef industry and our people are, are second to none. And that said, we're always trying to get a little bit better every day. And they're with the competitive pricing, with the competitive commodities, with uh, decrease in human 
human resources, we are looking for tools to help us manage these facilities uh, better and, and breaking it down. You know, there's the, there's the animal management and how do we get those animals to the proper endpoint? Uh, how do we use the proper technology at the right time? How do we have the right vaccine programs? All of these have to go into play to make the best decision that we can for the cattle health, the cattle management, and then the, the profitability per hit. We then have the operation management, which is putting all the pieces into place and giving people a list of these are the things we need to get done today. Here are the cattle that are up for, for whatever is going through the processing barn. And so we can manage the efficiency of, of the operation better. And then, and then the last one, obviously, is the risk management and being able to look at weather patterns, you know, feeding 800-pound steers from North Carolina in a Nebraska feedlot in January, you know, what's the best way to manage the health, the operation, and the risk uh, to maximize profitability? Yeah, when we talk about profitability and, and health issues, if those issues aren't caught early on, I mean, is there a quantifiable difference that it makes on the bottom line there? It's huge. A lot of times when we see a health issue, you know, obviously we see the morbidity and we see mortality. But some of the bigger issues come with the fact that, that these cattle don't grow properly. Uh, they, they are marketed inefficiently and, and there's a decrease in performance and a decrease in carcass attributes, uh, as well. So mitigating that, finding the, the outbreak early, having an alert system, uh, gives us the opportunity to apply an intervention quicker, which then helps decrease the morbidity, decrease the mortality, and obviously improve performance and profitability. At the end of the day, I, what I see is, is the development of a beef uh, suite of technologies between, you know, at Everag and, and things that this is the, the base, you know, you've got to have a data, you've got to have a platform to be able to measure outcomes, right? Because we can do all these, all the different things such as disease surveillance and, and animal sorting systems for proper outweight and management. But if we don't know the actual outcomes, tying it back to the database, you don't know if you made a difference. You just know you did something. So I see things such as the ability to, for improved diagnostics to find cattle that, that need help in the pen, whether it's a wearable or whether it's uh, a camera or something to that, that nature is going to be uh, tied into this. Endpoint management, sorting systems, the ability to put cattle in like uh, body weights and body types into like marketing groups so that we have maximize individual animal uh, performance. Um, I see that, that uh, coming. And then obviously what I really am impressed with, and Everagari does this, you know, they have a very rich relationship with retail and, and processors. Well, now we're going to be able to move that data one more point back to the feedlot. So if Retailer XYZ needs X number of stakes in September, and they run their stochastic modeling for, for their restaurant, which then the processor knows what they have to procure. And, and knowing what we have as inventory in the feedlots, it's just going to add to a, uh, the ability to, to forward contract and work together across the chains um, in, in, a, in a better manner uh, with the consumer in mind. What does Ag Smarter mean to you? Ag Smarter means, uh, you know, just getting a little bit better every day. Being in agriculture is no different than, than serving in the military, serving as a police officer, serving as a rural doctor or, you know, a, a, a clergyman. And, and we really wear the agricultural uh, producing food for our neighbors badge proudly. Um, we're trying to do the best we can for the animals, for the environment, and, and for our neighbors uh, in that One Health uh, triad. And so Ag Smarter to me is leaving it a little bit better than I found it and just continually looking for ways to, to do things uh, better. But uh, 
Ag Smarter to me means uh, working with a lot of smart people at Everag and uh, our partnership between our group, our cattle feeders and Everag is, is going to set a benchmark that's not been set before. Well, Dan, it's been such a pleasure having you here on Ag Smarter Sessions. Thank you for sharing your experience, giving a glimpse into the work that you're helping us do and the future of the livestock industry. Can you remind you, the audience uh, where and when they can catch you on Doc Talk? <laughs> you bet. As I, I got this tagline down. Um, you know, if you want to find us at Doc Talk, you go to www.doctalktv.com. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, Doc Talk TV, with all the 700 uh, episodes recorded. So uh, we've been doing it a while and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Very, very rewarding. Got to meet a lot of cool people. Um, but we appreciate you having us on uh, Ag Smarter today, Kate. So much Doc Talk available, uh, hours and hours worth. <laughs> That's amazing. To our audience, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you'd like to take a deeper dive into Ag Smarter and learn more about how EverAg is driving innovation in food and agriculture, visit www.ever.ag/agsmarter. 